Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. Yes, my name is Didi. Today again, talking and walking and walking and talking on the beautiful beach here in Phuket, talking about Bitcoin, blockchain and life. Of course, guys, this very early video. It's like 7.30 in the morning now. And it's really busy already on the beach. I don't know why. Maybe because I called them to come to the beach yesterday. Uh, but today, in this beautiful video, Four amazing Bitcoin charts, a beautiful trading tip, some travel tips, of course, live advice, and yes, talking about the news as I read something really cool. Now, let's jump into the charts first, guys, so I can show you what is happening to the Bitcoin price while I'll go there and wet my feet and feel the beautiful warm weather of Phuket. The first chart for today, guys, is this four hour chart. We can see beautifully how on at 3 o'clock yesterday, 15th of November, there was a buy signal. We need to wait for a candle close above the other stepping line. That is what happened exactly in the next candle over there. So that was 7 o'clock in the evening. We started to close above that yellow stepping line we saw a lot of green over there we can also look to the bottom indicator over there that was also there guys we could see the green starting over there and yes we could see of course also that blue line already above the white line and the white line trending up so that was a triple confirmation to take that long that long would have given you a nice profit already because now we are at 30 7,800-ish and you could have gone in somewhere around 36,500-ish already guys. Beautiful short-term chart. Again, that indicator setup that we use is really working. Now, let's quickly jump into the next chart. The first chart uh, is a 12-hour chart showing you how this beautiful pattern or fractal could be playing out into that 44k level for Bitcoin. That's a level I could we agree with, like between 42 and 48k, I believe, should be the target. And if we now look to that pattern on the left top, we can see that we are kind of forming that same structure. And that same structure could lead to a breakout around 38k, a pullback, and then even all the way up to 44k. But then we're talking already about December. So that would be a beautiful target for December to be above 40k, guys. Next chart. This chart is showing you on the weekly, so this is a weekly chart, every candle is a week, we are still looking very bullish. Yes, there is some upward potential possible. We can see the stock RSI is a kind of topping out, but we can still go a little bit sideways in that RSI, in that stock RSI. We can see all the under indicators all telling us, yes, we could go a little bit more up. So on the weekly chart, still looking bullish, yes, we could trend up a little bit more, maybe to that 40K level. If we zoom in a little bit, to a day chart then we can see hey this is looking a little bit more bearish there is even a sell signal this chart i found on twitter and we can see even that we have a bullish divergence so yes we could drop a little bit on the daily and that is why i always tell you to zoom out yes on the daily we can drop a little bit but on the weekly we are still looking bullish the moment we start to look bearish on the weekly i will also tell you so and that could be an opportunity for you to do a big swing trade but we are not there yet guys now, then we have the Bitcoin Relative Strength Index, the RSI, very important indicator. This is also used by Plan B. We are now at 57. So the RSI is looking stronger and stronger and stronger, and we are really positioning us for that huge bull market that will come. Just look to the left on the chart. What happened every time when we went from that greenish to the yellowish part? That is the pre-bull market phase and from that moment we slowly start to switch into the real bull market phase and they will probably start from the halving in april 2024 so again a reminder to please zoom out look at the bigger picture if you're not a day trader stop stressing about the daily volatility if you're a hodler like me or a swing trader that looks at the bigger pictures, then please don't freak out about the minute charts. I hope you really enjoyed the charts, guys. Yes, the charts were telling you exactly the same. That's why I always share these kinds of charts. I want to show you that Bitcoin is not about the short-term volatility, but about the long-term perspective. It will make you rich in the long term. So we will need to wait another two years, guys. But in two years, we will have seen a beautiful bull market top again. You will again have quadrupled your capital and you will be like commenting down below my videos. Thank you so much for telling us a few years ago to go into Bitcoin. 
that's how it always goes guys now let's jump into the trading tip the trading tip for today guys is about the macd a lot of people tell me a lot of people ask me what is the macd so the macd is a beautiful indicator to show you what the trend is so the MACD can tell you the trend is bearish or bullish. And that's how you see this in the histogram in green or in red colors, guys. Um, when they are green, of course, it's bullish. When they are red, of course, it's bearish. This happens because two lines are crossing each other. You can see in the MACD, the I was now distracted. Sorry, I didn't uh, notice them coming. <laughs> so you can see in the, the so you can see in the MACD two lines crossing. You have the 26 and the 12, and when they cross each other, uh, that is exactly when we switch from green to red. So there's an indication that the market is stopping out be because it's not that bullish anymore, and we're going into a bearish market. So it's a beautiful tool to help you discover what the trend is in the Bitcoin price. That was the trading tip for today. Always check the MACD. Which brings me to the travel tip for today, guys. The travel tip is about packing your clothes. I know most of your people fold your clothes. I started to wrap my clothes. By wrapping your clothes like a wrap, like a food wrap, so you roll your clothes, you save a lot of space. And I needed to prove it to myself as well. So yes, I did it one time with beautifully folded clothes. I started to pack my backpack and then I did it with wrapping my clothes. I could get up to 20% more clothes into my backpack when I start to wrap the clothes. Yes, and they, did, and they didn't come out wrinkled, they just came out perfectly normal, guys. So my travel tip for today is always um, wrap your clothes instead of folding them. It saves you a lot of space, but probably also a lot of time if you're a guy like me and still doesn't know how to quickly fold his clothes. So wrapping for me, way more easy. So that was a training tip, start wrapping. The news for today, guys, is about the Commerzbank in Deutschland. Yeah, Commerzbank in Deutschland. The first full service bank that now receives a crypto custodial license. So the Commerzbank, which is a huge bank in Deutschland, in Deutschland, in Germany, um, is now allowed to have custodial services for your cryptocurrency. So they will now allow you to buy Bitcoin with your bank account but they will hold all those bitcoins in the custodial service for you which probably means you can't send those bitcoins to me or anyone else it's because you will only be able to sell them again to the bank for deutsche mark or the central bank's digital currencies in the future i know we don't have deutsche mark anymore it's the euro nowadays uh, the thing that fucked up whole europe the euro but the Commerce Bank is now going to offer you to be able to buy your Bitcoins there and they will hold them very safely for you. But by doing that, you will lose the complete fundamentals of Bitcoin because you're not able to use Bitcoin the way you should be using Bitcoin. And that is being able to send Bitcoin all over the world whenever you want to whoever you want, as much as you want, without any regulatory framework or giving up your privacy. And that is now exactly what these banks want. They want you to give up your privacy. They want you again to listen to what they want. They want you to buy Bitcoins with their bank account. They will hold your Bitcoins for you. And if you make a little bit profit, then you need to sell to that bank account. And then they can calculate what your profit is and they will send that profit calculation to the tax company of the country that you're living in. So the tax company then will be able to just read your bank statements and see exactly how much profit you made with buying and selling Bitcoin and by that tax you for that profit that you made if you decided to sell it within a year, for example, in Germany. Because in Germany, the law is still, if you hold Bitcoins longer than a year, you pay 0% tax. If you sell them within a year, that's considered trading, then you need to pay tax. It's the same, I found, it's the same in Portugal now and many other countries are adapting that same rule, but you just make it way more easy for them to track your bitcoins and your profits and your other cryptocurrency profits if you buy them through the custodial services of these banks i would never do that i would always send my money from that bank then if i had a bank to an exchange 
and do my stuff over there. Maybe even use some mixers and all that stuff, which is mostly illegal in some countries, but there's also countries where it isn't illegal, and then mix up your currencies and then make them a little bit more disappear and don't pay tax about those currencies because you made a little bit profit. Then again, that's a long-haired dude, be retarded opinion that is only walking the beach and talking about Bitcoin blockchain and life every day. So maybe don't consider me as a very serious person. But, if, but I just don't like to have that full control on my capital, on my freedom of speech, on any freedom at all. So if you are like me, then I would never buy directly on your bank. I would send the money from your bank to another beautiful exchange and start to accumulate Bitcoin there, preferably a non-KYC exchange or a DEX. Like I told you yesterday, Apex Pro is the best DEX out there and they now added the pair USDT BTC and you can trade there with leverage up to 50. So yes, it's a beautiful exchange. Go check out Apex Pro. Make sure you buy Bitcoin in a non-KYC way, put it on your Bitcoin wallet, then connect that wallet to Apex Pro and start to trade as much as you want without any bank or centralized other entity like a tax company or government being able to find out how much profit you made. So that was the news for today. Which brings me to the answering of a question of one of the followers. It was a very good question today, so I want to answer that question, guys. Now, the question was, oh, my arm is getting tired. The question was, um, if you travel like Udity, where do you store your seed phrase, your backup of your Bitcoin wallet? Is it safe to carry your seed phrase with you? So, to be very clear, it's never safe to have that seed phrase near your hardware wallet keep them separate from each other. Your seed phrase shouldn't be in your pocket and the ledger, for example, on the other pocket. That's not safe. That's definitely not safe. So cutting up the seed phrase is still a little bit more safe, but still you have both of these parts with you. One is with your wife and one is with your children. So for me, the 70% of our capital that is stored on long-term storage, like hardware wallets that I don't have access to directly, the seed phrases of those, I think the best solution would be to cut one seed phrase, we are talking about 24 words, into four pieces of six words and store every paper with six words at a different notary, for example. Six words at a notary in Portugal, six words at a notary in Thailand, six words in a notary in the Netherlands, six words in a notary in Spain. And you need to make sure that all these notaries don't know each other, of course. I think that's the safest way of storing all these seed phrases. Because then when you really need to have access to your Bitcoins, you need to have access to four notaries. And all these four notaries need to give you these papers before you can even access your Bitcoins. So then it will become very difficult for a scammer or hacker to get access to those seed phrases, which I believe will never happen in a lifetime, guys. So that would be the safest way to store your seed phrase. But I think now you're talking about the seed phrase, for example, of the 30% of Bitcoins that you have with you. Now, that 30% of the Bitcoins, for example, that capital we have complete direct access to, we don't use only hardware wallets. We also have a huge part on exchanges like Bybit, for example. I trust Bybit fully. I also trust Kraken fully. So there's a lot of capital in there. A lot of capital is also invested in decentralized exchanges. I've been already telling you now for over one year that I started to invest in exchanges. It was even a huge article in CNBC. Whoa, the Bitcoin family starts to invest more than a million dollars in decentralized exchanges like Apex Pro. So these Bitcoins are on exchanges. These Bitcoins are on software wallets. And those seed phrases, those backups, of course, um, you need to keep them safe as well. So long-term storage, you can solve it with beautiful solutions like a notary or maybe even decentralized solutions nowadays, but use four different decentralized solutions. So it will become very difficult for a hacker or a scammer to get access to four different decentralized solutions. But if it comes to the short-term Bitcoins that you're using for trading, investing, living, those seed phrases, yeah, you need to hide them, guys. I don't know if everyone does it in a different way. Maybe you cut them in four pieces and every piece you hide in a different bag or a different place or a different shampoo bottle or a different whatever you will you want to use, guys. You need to figure that out for yourself. I can't tell you how I do it with the short-term uh, seed phrases because then uh, the people know 
how to find them. Everyone just needs to be very creative and do it in their own way. You can even, for example, if you have 24 words, make this beautiful thing in your head that you like write the words from back to front or that you write one, two, three, four, five, six. So you make it a little bit more difficult for hackers to find it out, but you know that system then in your head. I wish you a lot of luck with searching the perfect optimal situation for you to protect your seed phrases. That was the answer to the question. Let's jump into the next part of the video. And that last part of the video, guys, is of course the live advice. And this one is very powerful and also very simple to understand. But everything you ever dreamt of or you ever wanted is on the other side of fear. All those things that you always wanted to do or wanted to have or wanted to achieve, they're all the opposite of fear. You should lose the fear of everything to become this winner. Fear is destroying your complete life. Fear is not the feeling that you should follow if you want to become successful. Fearful people will never become successful. They will always keep running that goddamn hamster wheel. They will always keep doing the thing that is very safe. And very safe things will never lead to success. Successful entrepreneurs are successful because they lost the fear to become an entrepreneur. They thought different. They found a new thing that could help people in the world. They, now, they thought of a new product that would be better for the world. And because of that, stepping outside the box and losing the fear, they became successful. You don't become successful if you fear everything in life. And yes, I know I've been talking about this already many times, but I will keep repeating it, keep repeating it, keep repeating it, till you completely understand that you should lose fear. Fear is killing all your dreams. This is already stated on our website since 2017. So stop living in fear, guys. Fear will really fuck up your life. And it's, only, it's also the small things, eh? it's the small things, you know? Waking up in the morning, standing in front of your closet, thinking about what to wear, and not because what you like, but because what you think that other people might say about your dress or shirt. If it was up to you, you would probably be just walking with like a shirt like me, like cheap as fuck, like Bob Marley on it, and just be relaxed. But if it is up to your colleagues, it's like, ah, uh, well, are you dressed up really strange? So that fear already starts in the morning. Can I wear these clothes? Can I wear this makeup? Will people laugh at these shoes? Can I really wear a hat to my office job? So that's already fear. So why would you start your day already with that kind of fear? So losing the fear is not only about big steps in life. Losing the fear also is about the small things in life start to don't give a fuck don't give a fuck about other people's opinions don't give a fuck about what other people think of you lose the fear for what the fuck other people think about you that's fear you're living your complete life in fear the fear of eating certain food oh i might get even more fat the fear of not working out enough oh i might not work out enough i might not have like a six pack all those fears are really making it difficult for you to really enjoy life. I hope you realize that. If you're not that kind of person and you don't have fear for anything, man, congratulations. And I wish you the best life ever. Of course, I'm very happy for you if you already have that mindset. But I know for sure because I'm meeting so many people worldwide that still a lot of people live with that fear. That fear, I don't understand it. If people laugh at you, start to laugh with them. Let's see what happens. I think you really need to lose the fear for life. So don't be afraid to live life and live life to the fullest every single minute of the day without having any fear for anything. And yes, sometimes it might go wrong. So you learn and you move on. Now, that was the end of the video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about everything else? And yes, 
the beautiful women were now in the beginning and not in the end. But at least there was somebody that saw my call from yesterday for tomorrow again, guys. I'm on the beach. Come, I show you booty. <laughs> Thanks for watching and see you tomorrow again. Bam.